Welcome to the round of eight, the quarterfinals of the Starter Deck Mirror Tournament. It's me, it's a former champion disreputable. He's won this tournament before and looking to do it again. Uh, different, different starter mirror, but starter decks in general. It's difficult. This is such a dumb card. I'm just going to get rid of it, even though it's one. Okay, if we can get another one drop with the best friends, we're doing good. And we can't. Just play this for board presence. Good chance we just GP next turn. If we could get a one or a two next turn combo with best friends, we're doing good. Otherwise, this is slightly awkward. We have to decide whether or not we want to drop the best friends or not. Okay, they're going to make trade. And that's unfortunate when we're holding best friends. All we can do is pass here. This is not optimized at all. Not at all. And it looks like they got Hunt Warden, so they're curving. More important than going first or than going first in starter decks is who gets the better curve. And right now it looks like they have that edge. Do we get this, which is just gonna trade with their three drops? So we're a little bit behind here. Or if they have another Axe Woman, they could Axe Woman GP and hit here. So this is not an optimized situation for us already. Okay, that's that's solid for us. They're going to make trade, but this doesn't apply pressure, which is good for us. We draw something, which is something, and get that on the board. We're going to play Rald Ursine next turn. Depending on what we draw, we can go get a large turn. Like we got a, a cheap minion, we could play the minion, best friends, untamed regrowth, wild ursine, and get very wide very quickly. And okay, they don't even GP, so they had a bad turn. And here we've got options. We can go mega wide, this, 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 and this. I think that's the play. I am confusing two minions that aren't confused, but I think the board presence is worth. It's just so hard to get value out of Untamed Regrowth. Basically, I wanted to confuse his Barb Corleos, and we accomplished that. I didn't attack into this because I would rather have this still still around. This is probably going to take this out, or we could do this and this. Okay, so that is a sitting duck. Ideally, we would like this to hit here. It doesn't. This would be the next best option. Or would it be? I think this would be. Okay. The reason why I hesitated is because I can buy this fellow tracker. It's a 5-1. Having a 1 health minion is vulnerable to this god power. With that being said, this is a 1 in 6 to hit here, and they probably can't reliably take the time off to kill this. This trades with a lot of their minions, so I think it was optimized. So they're going to take the 1 in 6, aiming for here, and they hit. They've got the aim. So... That Sanctum buy looks very bad now. And they play this. Now I have options. I'm just going to do the simplest. We could have given up a lot more minions, but then that would have been a 6-3. Six 6-3s three. Six can be kind of vulnerable and easy to pick off. I'm going to go ahead and play the 6-5. It's the biggest minion in press face. Since we know our opponent passed on turns we know that they're probably going to have stuff to do at, at, at six seven range so this we know that they're not going to have many brick turns from here on out we got to keep that in mind okay if i can trade off these if i can trade off two of these well we've got the gob power as backup let's see what we have what happens here okay that goes face that hits there okay so we traded off two of our confused minions for that. We're happy. And let's go ahead and get this out there for board presence. 
Okay, we got best friends back. It's either that or untamed regrowth, if you look in our void. I had it memorized, but figured I should go ahead and point that out. This goes face, and that gives us lethal. So they needed this to hit here or hit here. And even then it was it was bleak for them. So we're gonna go ahead and take game number one of the quarterfinals, game number two, coming up very shortly. So we are going on to game number two. Game number one went our way. This is for the opportunity to get into the final four of the starter deck nature tournament. We both have to play the nature god, both have to play the Selena's Mark God Power. It takes a lot of decision making. We went first last game. If they're gonna go first this game, changing things up a bit here and a terrible opening hand mulligan. It's all of all three of these are bad. There's two wild root staffs in the deck, so I'm gonna get rid of that. And there's two of these in the deck, I'm gonna get rid of that. A little bit of a mulligan trick. The, you, if you mulligan one of the cards and there's a duplicate in the deck, you can't get it. Flame collar is just bad, and yeah, this this mulligan started out bad and never got better. So this is a minion. So just try to survive the early game. Jump on with when you, when you're playing from behind. Jump on is just not particularly useful. We need them to to have some blank turns to, to, to really get into this game and, and to top deck some draws as well. Because as of now, we have nothing for T2. So we're definitely going to be a little bit behind here. And they go ahead and make trade. And they pass. They have a bad turn. We're going to also have a bad turn. So we're not going to take advantage of the fact that they had a nothing turn because we had a nothing turn. I mean, we could play best friends, but yeah. So next turn, we can pip into five. So we're going to have stuff to do the rest of the game. We didn't get extremely punished by our opponent, but we also didn't punish them for not having two turns. So yeah, it looks like we have the same exact card. So these may end up making trade or they may do something else. Wild Root Staff. Yeah, that can get very, very annoying. They're going to make trade. I could actually copy their play, but I'm not going to. I'm instead going to go ahead and play this. I need board presence to counter this. Now, they could get a very wide board with best friends, and that could be a line that I try to do, though I'm more into let's get minions onto the board type of deal. Ooh, they had best friends, but they didn't have enough buddies, but they probably have a second best friends. No, they do not. Interesting. Okay. So we can have a big turn here. We can do this, this, and this, and that's, that's going to be optimized. So let's go ahead, go as wide as we possibly can. This trades here, this goes face. So what's probably gonna happen is this is going to hit here, this is going to trade here, and whatever they play this turn is gonna get buffed as well. And I'm, I'm hoping that this can trade off with whatever they play, which might be optimistic. But, but fully expect this attack at the, at the bare minimum. And they could get greedy and do this. Now, since they played this, they could do this and then this. That, that might be the line for them. And then we have to take a risk with this onto this. Mm. Yeah. I mean, we don't have to do that, though. We could just go face. We could go face and play this. This and this. This and this is a line, because when they hit here, hit here, we pick this off on the following. Just going face for 10 is something here. 
There's nothing in the Sanctum that really punishes us for playing Wild Root Staff on this turn. They can grab this, I guess. No, they can if they trade. If they double trade, they can't. See, the thing is, is if I leave this with one health, because it has ward, so I can't remove it easy. So I think this is the best line. It's not particularly fun, but I am pushing forward 10 points of damage, which does get them a little bit lower. It makes, it makes them have to consider some things, for sure. So the, the most natural play for them here is to peel here, peel here, and then we peel here. And we will get at least one minion on board when we do so. Ooh, they must have a Vanguard Axe Woman if they're opening with Selena's Mark there. Axe Woman trades here, they go face. Oh, Aspect of the Oxel. Okay. And Untamed Regrowth. Interesting. And the Axe Woman, as expected. And best friends. Wow, that was a great turn for our opponent. Yeah, that was a big swing turn for them. We are in a lot of trouble now. Get this out there. So their minions are confused. So they could play a Juggernaut and they could probably pretty easily clear the entire board if they've got Juggernaut. One line I have is racing for this Lambasting Wand. If this doesn't die this turn, jump on, face, face, lambasting wand is a line. But this is going to die. Ooh, they, they attack there first. Now they've got confused minions. That goes face. They probably want this and this to hit, but if this goes face too, they either trade these two or this lives. This goes face as well, so this guy's going to live, isn't he? It makes it a little bit interesting. And we're probably happy that that missed. A lot of options this turn for us. I think my best line is to go for the jugular, which is jump on here. Attack, attack, lambasting wand threatens lethal. So, attack, attack, play this, get this out there as well. So they need to buy this and use their god power this turn. That's part of their puzzle. But when they buy this and GP, then I can't hit them with lethal with the lambasting wand. Unless I top deck charging orcs, which would be clutch. They are threatening. 
Wow, great aim. That might be the moment. Because if they've got if they got charging works, they win. If they've got jump on, they win. A lot of outs win for them here. I don't think that gets them there. Wow, the lamb passing one takes us to the final four. Wow, that's that's about as tight of a starter game as you're gonna get. And uh, yeah, the, the aggressive line we took there paid off. So yeah, we're on to the final four. Excellent.